Hi YouTube, how you doing? And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to capture errors on SQL Server using extended events. Now, unlike the SQL Server error log, which captures SQL Server errors, really, extended events captures everything. It captures application errors, user errors, networking errors, captures all sorts of things. And what's really good about it is it's very, very user friendly. So you can open it up in the usual extended events grid. You can throw which rows you want in there. You can filter it. You can look at certain time spans very, very easily. So I'm going to show you how to create an extended event that captures those errors. I'm going to show you how we can use it in a production environment and you can start to use it to improve your SQL Server overall. Now I've got a few more tutorials on extended events, so check out my channel. I'll link to them at some point throughout this video. But I'd really appreciate if you can like the video if it helps you and subscribe to me if the stuff I'm making helps you too. So enjoy the tutorial. So within my extended events here under my sessions, I've got errors reported. Let's show you what's in that first of all. This, if I go to properties, I've called it errors reported. I'm going to look in the events and I've used the error reported event. So let's have a look in here. This one just here. If we go to configure, I've got client app name, client host name, the name of the database, I've got SQL text, and under filter, I've just filtered out anything that's a SPID. And this is important, the severity is greater than 10. Now in SQL Server, anything 10 or below is it's just informational but it's still regarded as an error, it's still logged in the same way. So you only really want anything 11 and higher. I'll show you an example of that in a second. I'll also show you at the end of this tutorial, I'll remove this filter and you can just see how annoying it is with everything it records. So throw that in there as well. And this is my event fields, which will come with the event. Under storage, I've just got a 64 meg file four of them at max. On my PC, that's overkill. On a server, it's up to you. If you're in a work environment, that might suit you. You might want it longer if you want to have a, a history of it or shorter if, you want to, if you're cautious about space for any reason. But when we're talking about 64 meg, it's tiny really. So let's go back. Now, if I go right, right click here, I'm going to view the target data. Actually, let's have a look at what's live data. As I was talking about earlier, if I do a raise error and I'm going to call it uh, so this is my severity here. So if I change this severity to be a, a 10, you'll see it's not really regarded as an error. It's more, more of an output. It's more informational. Now if I change this to be 11, it's raised as an error. This is why in our filters, we, we want to catch anything 11 and higher. Um, I'll keep it as 16. So what we'll see here, this is now recorded my error. It's recorded the, the code that I'm running a 16 and 11, and it hasn't logged the 10, which is what we want. Over here, we've got the client app name, the client host name, anything down this window here, really. Now, I'm going to add master into it. And if I run this a few more times, let's say, let's say I wanted to do select star from system databases and that's fine and then I'll run that and then the next thing I'll run is I'm going to run something against Arc Music. I'm going to run TV or customer. Obviously this needs to be against Arc Master and not Arc Music and not Master. So if I run that, it will error, invalid object name or it might just be, I might spell select wrong, incorrect syntax, few more errors like that and that should 
you can see here, it's telling us that's against master, valid object names, incorrect syntax. And what we can start to do, let's run this a few more times. What we can start to do then, we can start to write, if, if we stopped this, we can group this and we can start to see what sort of errors are occurring and the frequency of them. So we can see this is happening, it's happening from this PC or it's, we, might, we might want to group by app name. And we can see if you're in a work environment, you can see a certain application is causing you a lot of problems and target exactly where it's happening. The, we can group by error. Now as time goes on, if, if I'm getting annoyed with a particular application that isn't going to be fixed because it's an in-house application and your company is quite happy to ignore those errors, we can start to go in here. And just like with any extended event, we can filter. Remember to highlight this. And we can say that the client app name in one of these drop downs, there it is. Is not equal to, then we can enter our app name in there to help reduce the amount that we actually log. Now, as I was saying earlier, how important this is, if I remove this, I can just right click, delete cause, I'll get clause, I'll get rid of this, select OK. Now, if I go to here and do raise error, I might do a new, copy and paste that into a new window. Uh, we'll change that so we can easily see it. We can do blah, 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 blah. won't appear in there because it's not. Let's just close this and let's have a look. So these are the most recent ones. And you can see that it logs everything from change language setting, we're now using master. All these error, I mean, we could filter by error number if we wanted, but as you can see, the severity of these under 10, it's just the informational stuff that we don't really need. That to me is not an error. If you, if you wanna log it, crack on. But I like to, I like to filter under that. So. I'm going to go back in here, select configure. Greater than 10. Now over time, this will, this will really, really help you. I mean, even this week at work, I could see re recurring errors in the thousands, which weren't causing an overall impact, but it's proactive working. So you clear these errors over time and it just improves the overall health of your SQL Server. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you've got any questions, if you want to know the script I'm using for this, then let me know in the comments below and I can provide that somehow. And enjoy error logging.